Thank you for your support from all the videos. I just thought I'd finally put a face to the name and I realised that on the videos I've not been showing myself. It's more getting the confidence to do this. I thank you all for your support. The video channel's doing absolutely brilliantly, better than I expected. Now I'm going to try and do a bit more involvement in the videos. I find that just the photos and the wording over it isn't always getting the effect that I was desiring. So I'm going to try and do some more hands-on videos, try and involve myself a little bit more and make it a little bit more personal. You have to understand that obviously I'm still getting used to the camera, it's taken a little bit of a while to get the hang of it, but you get the basic idea, I will get better and I want to take any ideas on board that people have got to say. So if you've got any criticisms, if you've got anything that I could do better or things that I'm doing well and you want to compliment me on, anything basically please leave it in the comments or email me and I will take it on board thank you hi guys today I'm going to show you how to make your own moving bed filter the advantages of the moving bed filter is exactly in the name the media moves around inside the filter now I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment the media that I'm using is K1. The reason I use K1 is because of the small size of it, but also as you can see, it has plenty of ridges on it and lots of space inside for the bacteria to colonise. Now over time, as you can see on some of these, some of them are very white, some of them are very dirty. Now the dirty ones are fine. You'll find that in your tank, you will, they will eventually go from white to brown to sometimes even black. This is good, this just shows that it's working. All the bacteria that's stored on it is good bacteria, it's what's used to defeat the ammonia. Um, which is great, what you find is when you're feeding a fish, every time you feed a fish, any uneaten food, your ammonia will rise. Now what this does is, the bacteria on it harbors the ammonia and gets rid of it. Now the reason I've used K1 is because it's cheap, it's accessible, it's easy to get, and it's very lightweight which works well when using an air driven filter. As you can see here I have one piece that is quite clean and one piece that is dirty. So as you can get a good idea of where the bacteria clip clings onto. You don't have to use K1, you can use any other filter media. You can use bio bowls, you can use ultra bio home ultra, you can use anything that you can get your hand on as long as it's got a good surface area. Now what you're going to need for this project is airline and an air pump. Now on some of them you'll need an air stone but I'll come to that later. The one I'm doing at the moment is a little bit different but I find it works best. You'll need a sponge filter. The one I'm using here is quite a large one. This one as you can see on the top has a hole where the airline goes into. Now you put your airline into that onto your pump. When it's in the water with a supported base on this one I'm all add. It draws the water in through the sponge as the air is pumped in through here. So the pump air will be going in here, through the bottom of the chamber inside here, and back up through the tube at the top. As it does this, the water gets drawn in. Now the sponge acts as a pre-filter. This will have a good bacteria on its own. I find a good sponge filter is brilliant when you're keeping fish like shrimp or Plecos or anything like that because they like to munch on the bacteria that's on there as well and they're also easy to maintain and best of all they are very cheap. What you'll need next is a bottle, could be any bottle depending on the size of your tank. I've just picked the first one I could find which was a Robinson's bottle. What you'll need to do is take all the stickers off, make sure you scrub it with hot water so there's no glue left on there. This is very important. What you then need to do is drill holes into the top of a bottle as you can see on the one I've done earlier I've drilled the holes into the top now I've done six of them on this one but what you'll find is that's where the water gets drawn in as well it's extra water into the filter what you then need to do 
is at the bottom is drill some more holes as you can see here, as many as possible because this is where the water is going to escape and the air is going to escape in the filter what you need to do next is determine the size of the tube on your sponge filter just bear with me when I get used to the camera and you need to drill a hole in your lid that will fit any one that's too big as you can see that I've done here will just slide straight over and it won't fit properly and you'll find a lot of the water in the air will escape so once you've got that and you've got a good size fill the bottle with your media I always recommend about a quarter to half full as you can see I've done on this one here now what you need to do then is you need to tip it up bearing in mind obviously there's a hole on the bottom so cover it Take your sponge and you put it in. And there you have it. What you will need to do on this one is a hole that I've got on the back here, which will feed your airline into it, into the tube. So now what will happen is as the water has been drawn in through here and through the holes on the bottom it will force the air and the water to move around inside the bottle so what you'll get is like a vortex effect all this media will start spinning around now we don't want to be too fast, it doesn't want to be anything drastic so it should just be moving around enough you'll find the air bubbles will then escape out the holes at the top which can help break the surface area and you'll still get the aeration in the tank make sure you use a pump that's powerful enough for the filter obviously with a larger tank try and use a larger pump and what you'll find is as it's spinning around it's bringing in all the water the pre-filter will take over large bits away from the filter and then all the ammonia and the bad bacteria will come in here and then the good bacteria will harbour in here and all that good bacteria will stick to the media and then over time it will become a very stable working ammonia remover now you have to bear in mind it won't work straight away the pre-filter will do a job straight away but removing bed filter will take a couple of weeks sometimes even more to fully mature so don't you need to be a bit patient when you're doing this you can use black bottles if you don't want it to look like this because I can understand it quite looks quite ugly in tanks on a small tank you can just use the bottles instead of a pre-filter and it works in the same way, but instead of having a hole at the bottom here that's big enough to go over here you would do a small hole, drill the air line through it put an air stone in here again, have the holes at the top and also the holes at the bottom and it will work the same principle, the air will draw the water in and push it out, and it's the same principle for this, you will need to get hold of some suckers now to get these on, you just drill a hole in the back of your bottle make sure the hole's slightly smaller than the noggin on the back so that you can push it in, it will be tight but it will go in and it will not go anywhere and that's basically it your own moving bed filter I will mention that the moving bed filter that I've made on here is not one of my own designs there are plenty of them on YouTube uh, all very similar, some with a few little tweaks I've just done it as a basic guide of how to set up one, you can obviously do it how you want to do it. I'll show you different videos of how I've seen how to do it and also my own little idea a bit later on. The idea all came from Pond Guru of Tyne Valley Aquatics. I just thought I'd mention him, obviously he's the one that started the idea of it being in an aquarium. So thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.